in northwest England, there is a kingdom of scrap. This place will be the death of me. Built by Terry Walker, a wheeler dealer from birth. What has he bought now? Oh, my God. That's what you call a right nice little ornament. But turning cars over for parts and scrap. Hurry up, man, I need some scrap. And Terry blagging the deals. I can sell every nut, bolt and screw. Aren't bringing in enough cash. I'm going to get pennies out of this one. So after a tough few years, this family scrapyard business... Please watch them cars there. ..has gone online and global. This heap of junk, I managed to export it to Nigeria. The stakes are high for this family. Ken Terry and his Mrs Lindsay. Don't go spend any more money. Son John, <laughs> daughter Gemma and their ragtag army pull together... You know, it's just what we do. ..to turn metal... 150 grand plus, isn't it? It's happy days. ..into money. You've done very well there, Terry. Can you imagine being the king of all of this? Over the last three decades, this business has been built up from nothing into one of the North's biggest scrapyards by Bolton-born and bred Terry. When we moved in here, it was just a sort of like derelict shed near the gates. And we had to evict the pigeons and whatnot. We built the offices, renovated the other side, and built the cafe. Feel the coffee coming on. Are you having a brew? You can rest when you're dead. Come on. This business, now, I want it to be better. I want it to be the best. In order to thrive, this business can't just rely on smashing up bangers for scrap. No, that's it. All in all, there's probably four and a half, five hundred quid in it. And flogging off their parts. So Terry has a network of export partners across the globe, along with a growing online trade. Deal. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, mate. But nothing is too big. Well, I've never seen anything that big in this yard, apart from Terry's ego. Or too small for Terry to turn his hand to, right. to make a quick book. Well, this uh, hand cleanser. Right. I've, I've pressed the button, but it's not reacting, that. And end up buying 14,000. <laughs> yeah. Give all that. Whee! Standing by his side is his wife of 37 years. Ooh. Lindsay. So we met when we were 13 and we've been together ever since. Whoa, stop! Whoa, be ter careful! Terry has a real good knack of making money, but he does make mistakes. I don't like being backwards when you're driving. If it wasn't for me, we'd have definitely gone under. 100%. The business is a proper family affair. I would work every hour God sends for my family. So obviously, I want Gemma and John to take over and go forward in the future. So we've been here 35 years now, and I'd be so happy when Gemma and John take over and then we can have some time to ourselves. And... It's in my blood, isn't it? God knows it, whether he will ever stop, I don't know. Oh, yeah, well, there's no rush, just, you know... Dead the Terry and Lindsay have an anniversary coming up, and Terry is going to have to find a special gift. Uh, our Lindsay, she's put up with a lot over the years, you know, with me. Not been really good at buying presents for her. But this time, with it coming up to our 37 year anniversary, and I'm going to buy her something that she's going to be really happy with, it'll knock her socks off. I'm thinking more something jewellery, like a diamond ring or something of that nature. But the thing is, I've got to earn the money first to pay for it. So Terry's off out and about, hunting for a deal. I'm on my way up uh, to see a mate, a mate of mine called Bobby. He's got a Toyota Corolla there that he wants to sell. So I'm just going to see how much it is, see if I can buy it off him at right money. Toyota Corollas are good for export. You know, the engines sell, various front-end parts sell. They're still sort of like... Um, a wanted commodity. This car engine, they're always good, they're bulletproof. 
Garage owner Bobby has known Terry for 25 years. Terry wanted always for Japanese because he's going to make good money out of it. Now I've got three things in my mind. Export, salvage, then I'll break it. If I can buy it for sort of like 250 quid or something, there'll be a bit of a wage in it. That then gives me my catalytic converter, my alloy wheels, you know, various bits and bats on the car. I'm not going to lose, and then I weigh the shell in for a bit of wages. But um, I have to be careful with Bobby that the cat's still on it because he's got a little habit of whipping the cats off. Catalytic converters are a valuable commodity in the negotiation process as they use precious metals like platinum to clean out exhaust fumes. It's two and a half hundred quid there, maybe 260. If I turn it off, it probably won't start again, knowing Bobby. But it doesn't look like he's had an, a, the battery off it, which is one of his usual tricks, swapping the batteries to a, for a duff one. Let's see if it starts again. Yeah, usual duff battery. Hello, Terry. Hi, mate. This is where we find yeah. out how good of a friend you are. Yeah. I've gone round it. There's four tyres on it, all bold. Yeah. Headlights faded, mirrors broke. I, I can break that car down in, in my head. Yeah, go on. Yeah. The engine will do a couple of hundred quid, maybe yeah. 250 on a good day, maybe 50 quid for the cap. What's the shell going to weigh? Shell, probably be 100 quid. Correct. Yeah. So that's Headline. 200, 300, cap 350. Yeah. How much do you want for this car? I had in mind for 500 pounds. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's my price, isn't it? Oh, my God. Right, what was your price then? Normally, we pay 250 for them. Right. I ask five, you say it's 250. I'll probably be say 350 and I'll do 300 the deal. 300 quid. 350, that's the bottom of it. That's the way it goes. I would never entertain that car for 350 pounds if it, if it was anybody else. Yeah. There's no point. I'll shake your hand, 350. Otherwise, I'm going to put my hand in my pocket and that's it. Dick Turpin had the decency to wear a mask. That's the dearest Toyota Corolla this side yeah. of North Pole. Thank you. I'm going to get pennies out of this one. It's 2 p.m. and taking a break from the office, Lindsay's getting her hair done. Hi. Hi. At another of the family's businesses, daughter Kathy's hairdressing salon. Hi. Give it a good scrub. Don't I always? Over the years, while Terry did the deals, Lindsay managed the finances. But building an empire has taken its toll on their relationship. There we go. Been thousands of rocky patches, thousands, where I felt like packing my bags. I could write a book. There, is that better? That's better. The thing is with Terry, he's so dedicated to the yard and about making money. That's that same all over. Nothing else really seems to matter. For their anniversary gift, Terry wants to get Lindsay a diamond ring. You all right, Dave? But rather than go to a high street jeweller, he's got a guy coming to his house. Look, what have you got for me today, mate? I need something for our Lindsay. Right, Lindsay, yes. He's supposed to be buying me a new ring. Right. For my anniversary. Yeah. And I want one with just one stone. Yeah, that's the two and a half, 2.54 carat one. I think you might have it the right way. That way. That's all. Are you going to pick the ring or are you going to let Dad pick it? No, I'm going to let your dad pick it because. He's got he good knows. taste, Danny really. He has got good taste, but I know the quality of the diamond. Right. Where he might not. Yeah. You see how clear it is? Yeah, I can. I've no idea what I'm looking for, like, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm learning every day, mate. <laughs> I brought that one, that's a two carat one, but it's still a very good clarity grid. Yeah, I can see the difference though. Well, when we first got married, he's bought me all sorts of rubbish. <laughs> like what? Kettle, toaster, set of knives, fever, epilady, just things I wouldn't use. Tea service. Oh, God. That's Wedgwood, he said, it's worth, it's worth money. <laughs> oh, honestly. One's, that's an eternity ring, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's a full eternity As it's Terry, yeah, like even that. with an anniversary gift, he's always looking for an angle. Do you know, somebody was telling me about um, 
these lab-grown diamonds. What are they? Mm. What are them about, mate? Well, they're actually pure diamond. They are, they're made of carbon, just the same as a natural diamond. It's just that they've been made in in a lab, essentially, through high pressure and high temperature. Usually, so they are much cheaper than lab diamonds. I might be better off getting her a lab diamond. Oh, right. For cheaper. It's everything, isn't it? It's a yeah. special thing that you're going to it keep. It is special. That's why you should pick and it. And I think, yeah. And I present get you. me. The ring to me himself. Yeah. I don't suppose there'll be any reason to divulge to Lindsay that it's not a real diamond. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I would leave that up to you. Um, it's not that it's not a real diamond, it's just it's not a natural diamond. Appreciate your time, mate. Thanks. Th very, thanks very much, Dave. You're welcome, Terry. Thank you. Right, mate. What's that? Is that an old jag you're in, mate? Jag you, yes. Jag. How much is that? <laughs> oh, I feel like a new woman now. There you go. <laughs> Even newer when I get the new <laughs> ring. He knows what I want, so fingers crossed. Yeah, so I've got uh, Lindsay this this uh, diamond ring. So that it's nice, but it's a lab diamond. I thought I'd better get a summer or I'll get a clip round right here all. So I just want because it's a bit different, I want to show Natalie, you know, it to see what she thinks about it. Yeah. Huh? What your opinion on this? Who for? I bought this for Lindsay. Natalie has worked at the yard for 12 years. If any of the team knows Lindsay well, she does. Just over three carat. Is That's the well. uh, price in there? No, no. Price is not in. Right, should... That, that, <coughs> as a three carat proper diamond, that's 30 grand. What? Yeah. And it was a new carat. Six. Cos it's a lot, it's a lab diamond. Because it's a what? Why? Because it's lab grown? Yeah. What does that mean? Like, it's it means it thick? Were, it, were made, no, it's, it were made in a lab. What, you can... I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, yeah. What, like, homegrown? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't... Growing them in Manchester. No, is he being serious? Yeah, honestly, that's what it is, look. I think what I'm going to do is just, like, leave the certificate on the, on the table. And hope she skims her eyes over it and don't say? Yes. Yeah. Well, it says it twice, like, right there and there. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, she, she might even say thanks, you never know. I should hope she says thanks, it's beautiful. She doesn't usually. Homegrown or not. It is, look how sparkly it is. I know, it's clear, isn't it? Yeah. There's no flaw, a very, very little flaw in it, not much. See right. you in a bit. See you in a bit. Terry's hoping to fund some of the cost of the ring from the Toyota Corolla he bought. It's about to be broken down, so he'll soon know how much he's made. If we get this engine out, it should save me about 40, 40 minutes. Danny has been the depollution manager at the yard for nine years. His job is to remove engines, take out the car's fluids, and whip off the more valuable parts, ready to sell. That's what I do day in, day out, nice and easy. Wheels off. Fuel light. Oil light. Oh, that's clean. And now it's dropped on the floor. I wish it was all easy as that. Mickey, this is all yours. I'm doing my job, I do it really well. <laughs> Nicky's a dab hand at the forklift. He's been working at the yard since he was a lad. I'm the one with the brains behind it all, I think. Well, we've just had the engine dropped out, it's been depot, so I'm going to start now, take the bumper off, cos that's self. Nicky's job, along with operating the forklift, is to get the rest of the parts off so they can flog those two. You see that? Two headlights, two mirrors, wiper linkage by itself, so I'll take that off. We'll take the ABS pump off because we've got a buyer for them. One ABS pump took off. You can see that. Two shockers. We'll take the two shockers off because they sell. The radiator. Sell that for the fans. Backlights. 
Basically, that's it, pretty much. We'll mark it all up and we'll stick it on the shelf. Time for Boss Terry to examine his haul. Obviously, they've took the engine and gearbox out of the Toyota Corolla. Uh, I can sell that straight away. There's a few bits on the floor here. Um, the mirrors, I think one of them's all right, a couple of lights and that. The more we can sell, the better. You know, maybe sell the wiper motor or the ABS pump online just to see if we can get something out of it. But what I'll try to do is I'll try to sell the front end's parts to a guy I know in, in South Africa. I'll see if I can sell him the engine and gearbox and the shockers as well. Good afternoon, Mr Boston. How are you? All right? Good afternoon. I've got um, a black Toyota Corolla here. Yeah. Um, it's got a good uh, VVTi engine in it, 1.4 VVTi. Um, what, what do you want? Do you want to buy the engine and box and shockers? Yes, of course. Those, those are good sellers here in, here in South Africa. OK, my mate. And uh, what about the front end parts? Do you want the front bumper, headlights, bonnet, bumper, things like that? No, sir. Only the engine and gearbox. You sure? Do you not sell parts at your end? No, not at all. No, OK. Price-wise, 300 quid, OK? It's a bit heavy, man. Can we do 240? 240? Uh, I'll do it for 250. All right, let's do 250. Get it confirmed. I'm going to load it as soon as we can. All right, Mr. Boston. Anyway, enjoy South Africa. I hope it's a bit, um, a bit more sunnier than what it is here in, uh, in Costa del Bolton. Thank you, sir. Keep well. Goodbye. The engine and the gearbox will now be loaded into one of the yard's 24 containers to await the next shipment to South Africa. Anyway, you take care, mate, and I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you, sir. Keep well. What we'll do now is I'll, I'll go and see um, Louis and see if he can sell some of the items just to maximise the profits out of that one particular car. Louis's job is to advertise the parts online, sell them, package them up and ship them off. The sort of people you'd find in a scrapyard, most of us haven't got a GCSE between us. Great, Louis, where are you up to, pal? Uh, I'm just getting needs sorted for mail order, Terry. Uh, you know that black Toyota? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been stripped now. Yeah. I want to try and maximise our profits out of it. Yeah. So, have a look at what parts are yeah, there. We'll do, yeah. get, get them sold. Right, no problems. All right, then. Basically, now, there's nothing more left on this car. You'll take the copper out of it, or rip the dash out for the copper, and then the copper will get weighed in somewhere else, so uh, whoever pays the best price at the time. So that's it, then. Basically, it's called scrap. Terry bought the Toyota Corolla for £350, and a few hours' work has earned them a tidy profit. Off the Corolla, I've managed to sell both back lights, both hubs with shockers, both front lights. Probably around 300 quid. Along with Louis's contribution and Terry's sale of £250 for the engine and gearbox, plus other parts and scrap, they made £625 making a profit of 275 quid. So Egypt is coming on all right. But where Terry really makes his money is in exports abroad. It's worth over 400,000 pounds a year. The business side of it, in the early days, was all about walking trade. Now it's all the flip side. It's all about export now. If it wasn't for export, the yard would have just stayed small. A couple of years ago, I set up 24 containers. It's just simple and straightforward. The engines go in them containers, and once there's a wagon load, then I'll just say to her by message, there's your list, go through it, there's the, what you owe, pay it, as soon as it's paid, the wagon arrives, and then Nicky and his team set sail and load it. That's it. In a nutshell, just keep it simple. Timing is critical in the export trade. To meet tight shipping deadlines, Terry's team have to load large numbers of engines quickly and efficiently. 
Today, Terry has to sort out the details on a container for Turkey. Hello. Good afternoon, Jay. How are you doing, Terry? You right, mate? Yeah, 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 not too bad. I was just ringing to firm up the container for Turkey on the 30th. The, the what? The 30th? Yeah. Terry, we moved out. It's arriving on the 2nd, mate. I've got Spain's uh, truck coming in on the same day, mate. I've, I've been here for 30 years, mate. I've never, ever had to load a container... Well, two containers on the same day. That's going to... It's going to pull us right out, that. It's hard enough to load one. All right, pal. Bye. Bye. That's, that's going to cause us a lot of problems, that now. With the double booking just two days away, Terry must act fast. All right, Josh. Hey, mate. <gasps> Josh is the yard manager. He's Terry's right-hand man. Dad described the yard as chaos. This is what he's like all the time. It's every day when you come in, there's another problem. £350 we sold then. Take it up, my wages. Listen, mate, listen, I, I, need, I need the lads, all the lads upstairs. Uh, round them up, let me uh, give you the heads up of what's going on. Can I have Steve, John and Nicky to reception, please? What's this, Dave? Have you got any sacks? <laughs> Coxie is Terry's gate man. Morning, sir. You all right, lover? We've got a customer here. All right, pal. He's the first port of call for the customers. Coxie has had a checkered past and spent time in prison, but Terry believes in giving people a second chance. Terry pretty much, like, saved me from, like, probably getting in trouble again, really. Been in the job for, what, two and a half years now, made some money, saved up. You know, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm on my feet. I can spot the capabilities. Within a couple of weeks, I know what the boundaries are and what the capabilities are. There's good and bad in everybody. I'm remorseful for what I did in the past. I don't want to, like, you know, upset him, because obviously he's, he's, he's done me proud, hasn't he? Are we in trouble? I don't know. It's not said. No, it's just a meeting, isn't it? Is. Really? I don't know. It sounds like... What, do we have to go upstairs? It sounds important. All right, Peg, wait. Hello, yes. yes. Right. What it is, it's my fault and it's the container guy's fault, you know, for Turkey. Yeah. Well, it's coming on the second. Yeah. What else is coming on the second? Oh, yeah. Spain. 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 So, like, what's the plan? We've got, we've got to work it out now. Where are you going to park up? All the engines that come out mustn't get mixed up. That's why I called you in. So you've got a plan. I'm going to spearhead it tomorrow. I'm going to pull the engines out. Well, you go through the list, make sure they're all there, yeah. put them in the lines, ready. So when the truck comes, I've got five people with me, yeah. then we can two on one, three on the other. Just it's got to be done by the time we go home tomorrow. Right, lads, so you are right dismissed. See you, John. See you later, See you. See you. See you. Right. Bye. Crack on your normal. Show me what you're made of and don't stand in it. If Terry's worried, then I'm worried, cos he doesn't worry about things like that. They've, we've got a £44,000 deal. Two containers on the same day is gonna. It could end in disaster. But I, I hope it all goes to plan. We need the money for the bank. It's Tuesday, a big day at the yard. The lads have to get 140 engines out of the storage containers and sorted for the two important export deals. They were all we're getting all the engines out to check if everything's there. We've got to be on point with this export. Down at that point. It's going to be a bit of a challenge of loading it in the time frame that we've got. Come on, KK. Done it many times. We've got we got this in it, Nick. We got this. <gasps> John is Terry's son, and he's set to take over the yard when his dad finally hangs up his high-vis jacket. I remember putting him in the machine when he was 10, 10 year old. I feel like I'm fulfilling that responsibility. I feel like I'm growing up into my dad, in it. With the shipments worth £44,000, there's a lot at stake for the lads. Export's the main thing, keeping this yard open at the minute. Emma oversees the admin for the yard's international trade. Hello, breakers. 
You can't just have one job role in this place. Terry will tell you you've got one job role, but then you end up with 50 others as well. Terry's been on these daft auctions again, and now I'm on my way to rob room to pick it up. With Terry, there isn't a dull moment. You don't actually know what's actually going to come through that gate. Steve gets some it's not good. Yeah, no problem. You know the yard has never had to do two lorry loads in a day. So the boss wants to make sure the lads are getting all their engines in a row. Can you uh, sweep all these bolts up? Because they'll go in the tyres on the wagons. <laughs> And we've got all the engines out, I see. But I'm just concerned now. Will that... So where's the container going to go tomorrow? Container? Yeah. Where's it going to go for the ramp? It usually goes here. Well, they've put all they've put all these there now, haven't they? So it's going to have to go right down there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. They're just trying to organise everything, but as usual, nothing ever goes to plan. Terry spotted a problem. There doesn't look 140 engines there to me. Should be about, uh, roughly 140 engines. It probably looks to me like there's only about 120 there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's really difficult to count them because they're not in rows. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. John, this is an absolute disgrace. For somebody who's supposed to know, you're supposed to know what you're doing. This is bad. You've just thrown them all together in one. You've not, you've no idea how many's there. He's just away with the fairies in. I don't know where his head is. He's put them in with all the others. I can't... It's out very hard now to count what's left. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Nicky! Do you know what, mate? Can't count them because they're just all in a great big... Hey, listen! Don't start puffing and panting neither, mate, because I don't like it. I don't like that. You know, when you're puffing and panting. Well, I don't, I don't need it, Nicky. I just want the job doing right. Mistakes and disagreements are common at the yard. Personally, I think they all fight for Terry's attention in some form of way, and then they're all trying to be the boss. Get the sack and put them engines in the shed no. Hey, Make why moves. Does it always be? Because I've asked you and you alone, and you. All these arguments happen all the time here. This is a daily occurrence. Listen, I'm not, don't make me sack you. I try and tell Terry all the time of sometimes where he's going wrong with the lads, but it does sometimes fall on deaf ears. Danny, do we, it looks like you're way short here. There's loads missing here. You're a mile out, you're a mile out. So they've got to be in them. With some of Spain's engines gone astray, it's left to the boss to start hunting in the other export containers for the ones that have gone missing. This is another one where they put all the engines to the front. They should start from the back, but they don't because they're lazy. Where's John disappeared to? Well, why'd you do this to me? You make the job so difficult when it's not. So is that one, one of them missing? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12 engines to get out. With a dozen engines for Spain's order still unaccounted for, Danny not only has to hunt for the right cars, but also remove their engines. Terry's on well path at the moment. He's not an happy man. I'm absolutely sick. I, I feel sick now because they, them lot there can't do their job correctly. It's just idiots, absolute idiots. This business now doesn't feel like it's good enough for me. I think to myself all the time, where would we be if we had really good people that were experienced? People that know how to run a business. God. You know, I, I can run it, but I, I feel like I've come to a limit. If he wants his cake and eat it, mate. And it's never going to be no better than this. And sometimes it, this is not good enough for me. This afternoon, I've sent various messages to the workforce. I was absolutely disgusted, embarrassed, disappointed. You were at least 12 engines short for Spain. 
I need to know who's got them missing, who's took them out and what's missing. So, it's fireworks tonight. My main concern is the customer, that the customer gets what he's paid for. Simple. It's not, not rocket science. You're going to lose my customer. You lot are making me ill. You are not using the list. You're all fuels. You've not got a clue. So, 12 engines. So Danny's got to get them engines out now. How the heck are they going to get 12 engines out before lunchtime tomorrow? That is a, that's a, some sort of task, that. You know? Well, the lads have a tall order on their hands. Terry's biggest challenge is yet to come. Giving Lindsay her unconventional anniversary gift at their favourite restaurant. I've been thinking about getting you a nice diamond ring that you really like over three carat, because you wanted three carat or over, didn't you? Yeah. But not too big. I've got you this. So I hope it's uh, I hope it's what you like. It's a bit different than that one I bought you when we got married, it looked. That's really nice. I really like that. You've done very well there, Terry. Well, if you're happy, I'm happy. That's all, that's everything to me. Well, you can be happy, cos I like it. <laughs> if, you, if you ever kick me out, you know, you've got something for sale then, haven't you? Oh, this is a description of it. Yeah, that's everything about that ring. Round and brilliant. Yeah. 3.4 carats. Laboratory grown diamond. Yeah. What does that mean? A lab diamond takes about six weeks to grow in a, in a, in a lab. But I can tell of... where your face, you're up to something. No, no, no. They are a real diamond, but I couldn't wait like a few million years. I've not got time, yeah, you know, to get one that's come out the ground. <laughs> All right. So what, what I did, I, I got you that. Um, they were a little bit cheaper than a normal diamond, but it only took a week. Well, it doesn't make. matter, does it? Are you sure? I'm positive. Oh, that's all right then, because like you, anyway. you, you had me going there. Where's it from? It's from a jeweller's on the other side of Salford. So like, instead of coming from South Africa, it's from Salford. <laughs> it's really nice. I love it. No, it's not about the price. It's about what I like. Good. Me and Terry have been married 37 years this year. You know, there's plenty of times that and he'd probably say the same thing, that I could have just gone and thought, oh, I've had enough of this. You know, but we've not. You know, that's what it's all about for me. You know, try and be with the same person forever. If you, if you marry someone and you say them vows, then that, to me, meant that. Jewelry oh. solved <laughs> But he's a good jeweller. <laughs> <laughs> if I had my life again, I wouldn't change it. It's all been fun and games and a roller coaster, but we're still happy. Back at the yard, and the two containers are due in the morning. Well, the pressure's on. Uh, for me and Lance to get these exporters done, get them out on time. But in all honesty, I don't think it's going to be. Uh, possible to get these 12 engines out, uh, but we'll see what happens in the morning. Yeah, so we've got a challenge on today. We've got a load of 140 engines, uh, but two containers, one for Turkey, one for Spain. So it is going to be a challenge for us uh, to get it done. But now I've come in early this morning to get 12 engines out for the Spain job. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, I can get it all done. I'm hoping to get these main engines out by 12 o'clock. I didn't realise how bad it was until mid afternoon. And when I realised how bad it was, I went, I went into panic mode. This is the most that we've ever had, had to catch up on. And I'm still the only one in the yard. Bad time. 
with Danny busy taking the engines out. The lads are one man down for loading. One down, first engine. There's £44,000 riding on the shipments. To tell you the truth, we need this. We need this to, like, to stay open, really. We all talk about yesterday, 12 engines still in cars for Spain. Not good. Terry's absolutely gone ballistic. It's the lad's fault. It's just a matter of keeping an eye on him. Yesterday, a lack of teamwork meant the lads messed up, causing serious ructions. So Terry's in now. All right, Steve. Terry is all about work. Just keep active, it keeps the mind young. He expects everyone to be exactly like him, as hungry as him. You've got to set the example, haven't you? You know, never ask somebody to do something you can't do yourself. He's God in this place. John, can we get these pallets in the row in the pile there? Eh? I'm just trying to get this side all tidied up, pal. To get the shipments loaded in time, the lads are going to have to get the yard organised. And put plenty of sawdust down so the trucks don't skid. Just give that a... Yeah, yeah, spread it out, pal. You've got the tripping over each other problem, so they've got to organise now where to put the container and who's doing what, because we don't want chaos. Give it a right good sweep now. I, I just need everything to run smoothly, you know, which I know it can. We'll get all this side tidied up now, then pallets away. I know they're capable of doing it, but they've never done it before. A few bits over there need picking up. To succeed, the lads are going to have to work together. Come on, lads. The jobs are done. Trucks in. Turkey, turkey, turkey. The truck's coming. With the lorry in for Turkey, the lads can make a start on loading the engines. Come on, come on. Right, the kid, come on, mate. The space is limited at the yard and the second lorry bound for Spain due soon. They must be quick. Oh my God, do you think this is going to get pulled off? I ain't got a clue, that one. <sighs> yeah, I don't want to jinx us, but we'll get there, won't we? <laughs> No time for arguing. We all just work together. That's it. Yes, to me. Done all the hard work, done it all on my own, yeah. <laughs> bon voyage to Turkey. The first container is off. Well, scrap is. Cheers, mate. Okay. John? Yeah. The Spain container is going to arrive in, so you need to uh, you need to get the lads ready for the wagon coming in. We need to go and check that Danny's got most of these engines out now and make sure they're ready and tagged to go to Spain. Ah! Danny! Emma is engaged to Danny. Where are we up to? We're halfway through at the minute, and this is just slowing me down because I'm not lucky from talking. Danny's been in since 7am this morning. He needs to be on the ball. There's still quite a lot in cars. Yeah. But there's no rest for the lads, as Spain's lorry has arrived. Well, I don't think the driver's the best of drivers, so... I don't think he's done it before either, so he's struggling a bit. I'm <laughs> It's a bit hard to get him in, to tell you the truth. He's not going to get it. He's not going to get it, mate. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Yo, listen, you've got to be in the middle of the road. Middle. So get your wheels, wheel here. Yo, wheel, and a wheel here. Worst driver we've ever had. One. 
No, the cabin. Turn the cabin. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you've got this. We're just getting him into the head now, onto the bridge and weird, so we can get him to the top. Get the engines in. Hey, do you know any Spanish? No. Fast! We got there in the end, it just took us an hour to get him up, but we can uh, get the sawdust stone now, get the tyres ready and get it loaded. Can I have an update on state Spain's situation at the minute, Dan? Not too much, just take out. After these. So technically, technically there's three. OK then, no worries. I'm going to pick up the face. With a limited time slot to load up the lorry, Danny has to get the engines out fast. We have to load the containers on time because they have a certain window for the trucks, so they've got to be back at the loading bay to go back to their country at a certain time. We have to make sure it's there on time for it to leave. If it doesn't leave, then obviously the exporter is going to get charged more money. We're running around chasing our tails because obviously the truck's here already. Trying to get Danny to drop the engines while the truck's here, while me, John, and everyone else putting the engines in for Spain. The engines are out, so Spain's lorry can now be locked and loaded. Well, that's brilliant. Chuff to bits on that, mate. That's mint. You know, yesterday I wasn't I wasn't too uh, too pleased about what had gone on. Um, I just thought that they were lost, you know, with it all. But obviously it's turned round. It's it's come together. So it's happy days all round. So he's in a good mood. He's happy. He said it's all done and dusted. Danny's done a good job in catching up. We've managed to get it under control, which is, that's Danny's job at the end of the day. Mate, I appreciate all your hard work and your efforts, pal. I really do, honestly. No, I mean, you, you, you stepped to the plate, didn't you, this morning and got stuck in early and you boxed it off and that's mint, that. And him and your man's got stuck in as well, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, they've, they've worked together as a team and they've got it boxed off. I can't ask no more. Danny and Nicky and John have spearheaded that today and I really appreciate it. It's not very often you do get praise, but tomorrow morning, You'll be all shouting and all that, so because another day is it's, it's totally different. You know, there, you've got to try and find the good in people. The way I look at it, try and find the good in them. If you can't find it, well, I'll have a try. Lindsay said, sometimes says, you know, you need to give up on that person. And, you know, I said, well, just one more try, one more try. I'll be honest, 90% of the time it doesn't work. But every now and then you'll get, you know, a couple of good ones, a couple of golden nuggets. Have a look at your ring. Look at that. Is it nice? Oh, it's lovely. So did you see that in the leaflet about the lab diamond? Yeah, and that, I, I spotted it and I said, what's well, a laboratory grown diamond? Yeah, but I didn't even know that that, that was a thing. I didn't. I really didn't. I really got a clue. It. It's a good idea. We might be able to grow another one in Terry and they can have a day off. No. No, one Terry is more than enough. Don't need another. Oh, well, no, I suppose you're right.
What is that? In Scrapyard Dynasty this time. What has he bought now? Oh, my God. Boss Terry is going large. A new recruit is causing waves at the yard. They've done it on purpose to show us lads up. And the pressure's on son John. I need more cars, man. To see if he can step up and run the yard one day. It's about time you put his foot on the gas. The stakes are high for this family. Ken Terry and his Mrs Lindsay. Don't go spend any more money. Son John. <laughs> daughter Gemma. And their ragtag army. Pull together. You know, it's just what we do. To turn metal. 150 grand plus, isn't it? It's happy days. Into money. You've done very well there, Terry. Can you imagine being the king of all of this? One of the most successful scrapyards in the north of England is run by a close-knit family. Danny! Danny! I've sold the engine out of that. At the helm is self-made man Terry. Bloody hell, it's freezing. Cup of tea, please. By his side, his wife of 37 years, Lindsay, who keeps a close eye on the finances. The glue to our marriage. Even though we've had that much stress, we've still had a lot of good times, you know, and good memories. And obviously the children keep you together, don't they? The pair have three grown-up children. Youngest daughter, Cathy, has a hairdresser's. Don't put too much of that oil. It'll be greasy. Come on, please. But two of their children are following in their parents' footsteps. Eldest daughter, Gemma, works in the office in accounts with Mum Lindsay. My mum, if she's in a bad mood or I'm in a bad mood or something, we might clash, but well, nothing major. We started out, we're dead close. Look at that, Natalie. What are you doing? She's got a blackhead. She's freezing out, big. Oh, oh, it's coming. She'll have a banter and a laugh. Get off. Have a wash. Oh, That'll be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she's, it's good working with her, either. Working alongside his dad in the yard. Hurry up, man! I need some scrap! His son, John. I remember putting him in the machine when he was 10, 10 year old. Put him in there and he was grabbing things. Stressing his head out. <laughs> I'd just sit him in it and let him move the levers and whatnot. You know, and I got him into swinger things like that. I remember I, I used to have him putting tyres, you know, one on top of each other, and he could do it. And then, you know, they, they were a bit, bit messed up, then they'd fall over, and then he'd put them back again. But, he, you know, you could see with the concentration on his face, even at 10-year-old. Last car here. And then one day, he got in that machine and he didn't get out. He just stayed in it and started, you know, doing it, you know, doing the job. He always says to me, he goes, yes, John, my favourite son. And I think, I'm your only son. <laughs> what other son have you got, <laughs> you know? You know, he always takes the mickey like that. <laughs> Terry is always on the lookout for a deal, regardless of what it is. While his day-to-day -day trade is all about selling car parts, he thinks he can make a profit on something a bit more ambitious. What is that? What has he bought now? Oh, my God. It's getting worse. He's taking a gamble on a vintage tourer. Honestly, I can eat sight, mate. I wonder how much he's paid for that. What even is that? It's like a camper van. Looks like something from Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah, it does. Every now and then you'll get what you call a pippin. Yeah, you'll get a car in or a vehicle in that you know you're going to have a, a, a good do on. Is it your new meth, Bob? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to be brave. Take this off. <laughs> We've had all sorts of shapes and sizes of vehicles in over the years, but this is the first one that we've ever had in this big. And it's not just the motorhome that's big. Terry has splashed out £500 of his and Lindsay's money on his latest grand plan. But if our Lindsay sees it, she'll be evicting me. <laughs> <laughs> Terry's just set in his ways. That's how he's... It's took me all these years to knock some sort of sense into him, honestly, it's true. 
and I'm still pulling me hair out with him sometimes. It's crazy. But when the previous owner called up to get rid of the Torah, Terry saw some potential, and head of second-hand sales, Tim, has some good news. What we've got here is the Chevrolet GMC Winnebago motorhome. We paid £500 for it, and they're very much sought after, so we could get a nice surprise or... Mr. Walker could get a nice surprise. 39,000 miles, MOT June 2022, sir. What, do you still MOT? Yeah, June next year. It's only done 39,000. Yeah. What's a good mint up, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Alice will be off to Spain in this. <laughs> and if it breaks down, that's we'll just uh, call it a draw, leave it where it is. <laughs> it's all there, though, isn't it? It's not leaking or anything. It's just knowing where everything is and what works and what doesn't. Got what bloody CB radio in it and everything. 10 4 for a copy. Can anybody hear me out there? My, my bird food's coming as well. My bird food's coming shortly. Well, it's nostalgia, this, isn't it? Just needs somebody who knows a little bit more about them to get, to get in amongst it. Like, there's a following for these, so I'm sure this will sell this. I mean, if Al Lindsay sees it, I think she'll just think, what's that? What a scrap iron. You know, because it doesn't look like anything. But, um, you know, I'll have the, I'll have a, I'll show around it, see, uh, see what she thinks. Yeah, Al Lindsay, well. come and get in here. Way. See, you know, like before, we were saying we could oh. get a motor up. Are you winding me up? Hey, 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 hey. Why am I not? Whoa! Whoa, stop! Whoa, be careful! I nearly fell off. Just want some mint up this, Lindsay, and we can be off to Spain in it. Well, right now I don't fancy going to go to Spain in it, but there's a lot of things you can do. It's all right. It can be our passion wagon. If the caravan's rocking, don't come knocking. Hey, you have a look, you have a look at There's a shower and everything. Bedroom there. Oh my god, that's small. So it's got gas, so that oh, underneath, the underneath is a gas tank. Right, don't mess with that while I'm in here. We got a light. Turn it off. <laughs> Terry's business is all about scrapping lots of cars fast. And this giant motorhome is going to take up a lot of valuable space in the yard. He needs to shift it quickly. So what's your plan with it? Um, well, it's up to you, love. We can either go Italy in it, but what I suggest... Italy. Yeah, Italy or Spain. But what, no, I, I reckon we should just sell it. You get, you get good money for this, you know. Right, I'll leave you to it. That breakers here and fuse boxes and all sorts. Yeah. I don't know that's on or off. I've shown Lindsay around this Winnie Bago, and I've told her now, I've made, I've made her understand it's not about what it is, it's just about getting rid of it you know, and sack all that driving around the country and, you know, getting in her head, she wants a motor home and all that. So, whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. You know, it's a vehicle. Just just get rid of it. So now so I'm sort of like in a good box. So it makes a change from being told off, you know, and buying things where we lose a bit. You know, this time, hopefully we're going to make a bit. Running the scrapyard is a full-on job. So Lindsay wants her and Terry to start taking it easy. You know, I love this place. We've been here 35 years now, but I'll be so glad when we can hand it over and then we can have some time to ourselves. My only worry is the fact that, you know, I'll be sat at home all the time. I'll find you something to do, don't worry. No, that's my biggest worry. You're already planning it for me. I'm not. Well, babysit. Yeah, but I'm not doing housework. Would it be good enough for me, Terry, believe me? <sighs> oh, what, what time do you call this? Gemma is being lined up to take over Lindsay's role overseeing the yard. Are you missing me something? No. Gemma, she's not changed a bit. I remember she'd only be two. I would say, come on, get out at bath, and she said, go away, you tow rag. I said, are you calling a tow rag? Andy! She's still a gobby bugger. I'm not coming back. Forget it. We're right. just a close knit team upstairs, and my dad probably thinks we do nothing, but that's obviously not true because we're the the backing to downstairs. If we don't do this work, there would be a dick. 
and she's already got ideas for how to modernise the business. If a man can do it, a woman can do it. So having a mechanic who's female would be great. Why not? E equal rights for women and men. Yard manager Josh Hello. has just found a new recruit that will fit with Gemma's ideas to bring the yard into the 21st century. Hello. Yes, Josh, are you all right? Yeah, yeah. At the weekend, we had a girl ring up saying that she was after a job, so obviously we need lads and I thought I'll give her a chance. Yeah, I've not got a problem if she's all right at a job. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know me, I'd give, give anybody a chance. Yeah. Let's see what she's like. Yeah. It's trainee mechanic Mel's first day at the yard, and she's kitted up, ready to go. I'm down as a spanner girl. <laughs> Come on, Melly. I help strip cars, take cars apart. Do you want to start at the front then, and I'll start at the back? Yeah, sound. Right. Nikki is as good as my mentor. What are we taking off, Nikki? The headlight, the wing, the ABS pump. He's the go-to guy if I don't know what I'm doing. You're managing Melly. I don't understand there. What don't you understand? I've always been an open-minded person with regards to employees. And back in the day, you'd never see a woman in this industry. So, you know, you give anyone a chance, always keep an open mind and see how they persevere. But are the regular spanner lads as open-minded as their boss? They've done it on purpose to show us lads up. It's different. It's like the first I've known for a woman to do it, but I suppose if they're good at it, then it's better for the company, isn't it? We thought we'd give her a try because we need an extra pair of hands. Right, what, 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 Maybe she'll do a better job than some of the lads, you know. I mean, to be honest, the women are, are, are better than men at multitasking, in my opinion. In my opinion. With all eyes now on Mel, she's under pressure to deliver. Terry and Lindsay want their children to take over running their scrap business one day. While Gemma will oversee the yard, son John will run the operation from the ground up. When John was born, obviously I thought to myself, you know, I hope that he follows in my footsteps and hopefully we can take this into the, the next chapter. I would like Gemma and John to take over the yard sooner the better. It's all John knows anyway. He's been here since... What, ten year old? John's similar to me. He's more easy going. What's happened, Dad? I mean, Gemma's, she's more like Terry, you see. So they'd probably make a good team. They'd probably run it better than us. But getting Terry to slow down. That should be on a pallet under the earth, right now. Let alone hand over the reins of his scrap empire. It's not going to be easy. My dad is definitely a workaholic, yeah. 100%. Just do it. Simple. What am I paying you for? He says he wants to retire, but he won't. He, he couldn't retire. His head had been ticking constantly. If my dad put me in charge of the yard, you know, I'm leaving it to you now. I won't be back for a few months, whatever. I'd say, nice one. No problem. I'd run it. I'd take more control. Georgie, bringing the container down and cut it with a steel saw. She's saying, Gemma, it's not exactly like we work together. But if I've got some like a problem on my mind, she'll be like, what's up with you, eh? And then she'll try and make me feel a bit better about it. Right. How are you, Jen? All right. You OK? Yeah. You're not getting one. But the kids are still trying to prove themselves, and today John is being given a chance to step up. Jim! Can I just have a quick word? As Dad Terry wants him to produce an extra two grand's worth of scrap to prove he has what it takes to run the yard one day. Right, what I need from you, can you try and get me an extra load out this week? I know you've got the stock, 
I just need uh, 10 or 20 more cars to make up a, a nice load. All right, then. Put the pressure on Danny. He yeah. brings me some more cars from the rack. Need some more cars, Danny. Now the clock is ticking for John to prove his worth to his dad. Under a bit of pressure here now. If John wants to take the reins of this company, it's about time he put his foot on the gas and got stuck in. To bring in the extra load, John needs to work through as many cars as possible. My job, I get fed cars after they've had the engine out and shockers and all that stuff, what may have sold, and then when the car's finished, it comes to me as a shell. I rip the car up. And John's confident he's up to Terry's challenge. I want to prove to my dad that I can run the yard and I can smash these cars out. Oh, I'm running out of cars. I need more cars. And my dad, he used to be good in the grab, but nowadays, I've been in it more now, so I reckon I can use it better than he did. I need more cars, man. What's happening here now? But they're still on that first car. I've just got to take control in it, but I've got to let my mum and dad see that dad John's becoming a man. Yo! We need to get these cars done, I need some cars! Terry's latest money-making scheme... Yeah, that's it. Nice. ..is a huge vintage motorhome. But it's taking up valuable space in the yard, which is costing them money. He needs to be selling that this week, that Winnebago. It probably would have been better giving it John to scrap rather than put it up for sale. Yeah. Let's hope it goes, cos otherwise he'll be sleeping in it. Hmm. But rather than scrap it, Terry thinks he can turn a profit by selling the 28-year-old motorhome to a willing punter. I'm just trying to get it all cleaned up. It's been stood for quite a while. Uh, make it the best we can. But uh, it's coming up OK. It's a lot better than it did when it first came in, anyway. Terry bought it for £500, and he's got big ideas of how much he can make on it. Price-wise, I think... I mean, Tim says, he says, I said, what are you going to do with that? What are we he said, I reckon it's worth 10 grand. I said, I don't think it's worth that much, Tim. But I, I, I think it's probably worth about three and a half, four and a half grand, something like that. Be realistic. You know, I'm one of these, me. Don't hang on to it. Get it in, get it out. Now Terry has to turn from scrap man into second-hand salesman for a couple of his contacts in the motorhome game. Well, hey, we've got Tim doing a bit. <laughs> Bloody hell, Tim, are you doing a bit, cop? You should have done that other side first. <laughs> so what is it you want it for? Just something to... We all have a dream, don't we, Terry, about going to Spain and him or whatever? Well, I'll tell you what, mate, that'd make it. I don't think we're well serviced, I reckon it's easy to get you there. Yeah. See so, you. Yeah. All right, Mark. Yeah. This seat spins. Yeah, that spins right round. Yeah, nice. So there's a service book there with it. This is mechanically sound, still amorteed. Yeah. Everything you see is original. It's just as he. You no, know, the guy bought it, yeah. 70 years of age, intended to use it, and then found out he can't drive anything bigger than a car. Right. So he, he parts up. Just parts up, yeah. 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 It's only done 39,000 miles, which is nothing for a diesel, oh, yeah. is it? Yeah. You know, it's nothing for any car. You've got a shower in here. You do a bit of bedroom Olympics in there, pal, eh? <laughs> <laughs> What's that behind you? The fridge? Yeah, full, full, full fridge there, mate. Fridge. Fr oh, yeah, it's nice and clean, isn't it? Yeah. It's got water pump. Oh, yeah, water heater, oh, water level pump. test. Put that water pump on. Yeah, that, mean, that means the pump must be working, the water pump. Do you mind if we have a look at the roof, Terry? Yeah, let's have a look at the roof. Just in case it's leaking? Yeah. Let's have a look. Ah, it's sound, that, innit? Sound as a pound. Sound as a foot pump. <laughs> Nothing is being left to chance for Terry to get this sale. Yeah, have a look at this. 
Got a brand new exhaust. Oh yeah. Brand new brake cables. See that. Yeah. It's solid as a rock under there, pal. Is all right for bring me dog in? Yeah, yeah. No probs. To seal the deal, Terry wants to take the buyer and his dog Buddy for a spin on the open road. So are you having it if dog likes it? If he barks three times this year, if he only barks twice, it's a no. Right, okay. <laughs> Come here, Muckley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. Get up there, right, mate. Are you ready? In the for driver's this? seat. Just think where are we off now? Uh, what's Yellowstone National Park, please? Stop some way motors, here we come. <laughs> I've had many a nice car from there, Terry. <laughs> Straight into Spain. See, if you just um, spend a few hours of your own time on it, yeah. you'll have yourself a good vehicle. So there you have it, mate. It's up to you now. I'll leave it in your capable hands. Yeah. You like that, pal? <laughs> there you are, back three times. Sold. Sold. The dog's on board. It's just Terry that needs to secure the sale. Yeah, I've got the logbook here, Mark. So have a, have a look at that. So what do you want, what do you want for it, Terry? Well, I'm looking for five grand for it, which I think is cheap. Same, same as it were purchased for 11 grand not six months ago. Yeah. But I just want it gone, I want the space. I'll give you four and a half. Are you going to pay as a deposit now? I'll give you 500 quid cash. That'll do. That's, let's have a deal then, yeah? Nice one, mate. Nice one. Well, another one bites the dust. You know, we've um, managed to get the big old lemon away. I could have sold it to somebody down south, but I couldn't see myself driving that all the way to Oxford. Anyway, I'm glad it's sold to somebody local and especially, you know, because it's a, a friend. All's well that ends well. A bit of profit, that's what we're here for. Make a few quid, make a bit of money. Keeps our Lindsay indoors happy, doesn't it? Terry has totally nailed it. He's made four grand on a £500 purchase. Grab any. Oh, hello. Hi. You look happy with yourself. I'm not too bad. I've got a few bob use for you. Don't tell me that's after that Winnie Bago. Yeah, with the Winnie Bago, we won. Gosh. So there you go. Thank you. Unless I, I win, I'm more than I lose. And what you've got to keep doing is just keep going. Keep going. You can't stop, love. You can't stop. I never do. So much did you make on that? We, we paid 500 for it, sold it for four and a half grand. Well, at least this time you bought something and made money. It's new recruit Mel's first week at the yard, and Terry's checking up on her. Right, where's Mel? Ah, there you are. What are you up to? Not a lot. Right, Nikki, I need to have a chat with you. For Mel to earn her place on the team, Terry is going to put her to the test. She needs to pick up the pace and strip more cars under direction from her mentor, Nikki. I need probably 15 to 20 cars more. All right, so I'll leave it with you. All right, All right mate. I'll just crack on here. Right, nice finish. one. Thanks a lot. All right. Terry, he likes to know make sure the jobs are done. And um, he's not happy when they're not. Nick, have you got 12? Yeah, yeah. I did see him shouting at a fair few lads, um, which I won't like to be on the back end of. <laughs> If the jobs don't get done, Terry won't be happy, will he? He'll start kicking off with it because after this we've got another ten to do. Oh, well, no. Right, that's one down now. Another ten to go. It's ten a.m. Friday morning. To find out whether son John has what it takes to take over running the yard, boss Terry gave him a challenge yesterday. He must make two grand in 24 hours by producing a lorry load of scrap. I would love for Gemma and John to take the reins. You know, I, I really love them for, to take the initiative. John, yes, Steve. All right, Bob. Yeah. And me to be a small part in this business. I'm always there, I'm always here at the end of the phone. Nice to see you. Just you know. Yes. <laughs> but I don't want to be too integral to it all, all the time. Johnny's Terry's son, obviously. It's like seedy bread toast, your butter. Nice. Terry expects John to be running this yard. 
But John Fiennes, I reckon, to me, John Fiennes, he just wants to be a worker like me. He wants to be just one of the lads. With Dad Terry's deadline looming, John can't afford to waste any time. Pressure's on now, pressure's on, got to get it done. This is the beating out of the business. When that stops, the whole yard stops. He's the one everyone's looking up to. Making it all possible for John is the 35-ton, 14.8-metre reach, Terex 350 Grab. Affectionately known as Gloria. Yeah, me and Gloria, we work together as a team really well. We come together, like peas and gravy. Ready to go? Yeah, he's nifty in the grab, John. Give him my car so I can do my load. He can rip the lips off a cockroach. <laughs> Let me tell you with that. For anything about me, he probably gives her a good shouting at. Gotta keep going. If he um, like accidentally damaged a car or something, he'd probably blame Gloria. In just a couple of hours, John must make enough scrap metal to fill a lorry load to sell. When I'm sitting in Gloria, it feels good, it feels nice, you know, because I'm just doing my own thing. I'm not getting my head pecked by everybody on the ground. If I'm on the ground, everybody's like, Johnny this, Johnny that. It just burns me, I don't. I just want to sit up there in my own little bubble. Never run out of time. John has been able to operate the grab since he was 10. Now he wants to prove his worth to Dad, Terry. There's a big difference in Terry and John because of how they've been brought up. Our kids have had what they need. Terry never had none of that when he was being brought up. So he's, that's where the eagerness comes in. I need to earn money and he's, you know, and it's a big difference. Working for my dad, he's like my best mate and he's my teacher as well. When I was younger, you know, I used to go up there with him and watch him, what he was doing. Man, I've only got, like, two cars left. Just drop one in! John, just drop one in! Roger that, sir. Ready to go! Got me all right. <laughs> <laughs> John has proved himself filling a lorry load full of scrap, but he needs to find out how much it's worth. I'm just going to see how much I've got inside this wagon, how much weight, scrap. If you look now, Josh is weighing him empty, and then we're weighing full, and we'll take the first weight off the second one, know what's inside. What's in there, Josh? Ten. Ten tonne, ten tonne 500 in there. That's right. It is. £2,142, that's what I've got in here now. Yeah, I'm buzzing, man. Everybody pulled together, we all worked together as a team, and we got the load out. Jobs are good and sweet. With John's hard work paying off, things are looking up at the yard. Lads, can I have you to the reception, please? Come and collect your wage slips, please. John! The lads are always happy when they've got their wages, aren't they? It's like, hand out. As soon as you mentioned oh. something about doing with wages, they're all for that window. Fuck up, man. You've been shouting this for the last 20 minutes for parts. Wages get mentioned, you've shouted the window. That's Josh, he's that one. For the past 12 years, accounts manager Natalie has let everyone know how much they'll get paid. When the wage slips out, they always followed with loads and loads of questions of why they've only got this much, why have they only got that much, when half of them sub, half at week. If you don't feel bad, I'll leave this guy. Well... It's not even my fault. Stop subbing. A lot of the time, they'll say the wages are wrong because they're eating everything out of the cafe. Like, literally, crisp, chocolate, pot, butties, this, like... And they'll forget what they've eaten. And then they'll question, like, oh, I've only got that much. You've had 50 quid worth of food in cafe all week. That's why you've only got that much. So, that's why, no, I don't like giving them out at all. To keep the money rolling in, Terry's got another scheme up his sleeve that he's hoping is the start of a nice little sideline. 
renting out the yard as a filming location. I've been approached by um, a film company uh, down in London who do uh, sort of like rap videos and stuff. So they've got this young lad from Bradford who apparently is very, very good, and they've asked me if they can use the yard as a backdrop for one of the videos. I mean, the thing is, it's not a lot of money. It's 300 quid. But 300 quid's 300 quid. You know, you can't turn your nose up at that. The creative director from the film company, Sean, is briefing the yard on what they need. What sort of, like, main things is that? Um, so the main scene is where they're now going. It's so with a big pile of rubbish, some cars stacked. Right. People, shadows, in and out of the cars. Right. And that's, that's another scene. OK. Terry and his team have just a few hours to transform the scrapyard into a set fit for a rap video. They're getting us to set up sort of like an alleyway, like a, like a, a tunnel, where they're going to bring a Mitsubishi you know, 4 by 4 in for the rapper to sing at, at the front of it. You know the cars that you want stacking? Yeah. Do you want them stacking sort of like one, two, three on top of each other? I don't want them looking too neat. We can move these down here. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought as well. Yeah. It's starting to get into a, a bit of a mission, this now. You know, cars off the shelf, you know, move this to the... We don't want that to put that there. So you've got two there, haven't you? So it surely needs three, four cars. Pile that pile up now so it looks rough. Well, they're just trying to set it so it looks um, a mess, which shouldn't be too hard in this place, would it? <laughs> so many demands are being made by the film crew. Terry's beginning to wonder if he's bitten off more than he can chew. This video job now that we're doing in the yard, it's a bigger job than I thought. You know, I've only charged them 300 quid. I thought it should be three grand, this. I feel like I've been sucker punched. Terry, he does his own thing no matter what. He always thinks he's right. Honestly. No, no, I'm here to make money. I'll buy and sell anything. It doesn't matter what it is. But he doesn't always make money, and this is the hard part. And he, he just won't be told. He won't be told. New Spanner Girl Mel is being tested to see if she can strip cars under pressure and is cut out for a job in the yard. I just try to teach her, but she don't listen. You're hard work. <laughs> I just don't take your <laughs> Stop getting cocky. I'm obviously the only female, but got a very nasty mouth when I need it, and uh, I can chuck a few digs. <laughs> She's doing all right so far. She seems like a fast learner. She gets stuck in. She's a, she's a grafter, to be honest. Push it over underneath and then round here. 100%. I can definitely, definitely never see me being on the spanners. Not... I can't even help chance. I can't even hang a picture. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a graft. It's a right graft. I'm not going to lie. But I enjoy what I'm doing. But with two more cars still left to strip... One minute, one minute, one minute. Mentor Nikki is piling on the pressure. One minute, one minute, one minute. With her future at the yard riding on this task, Mel is trying to keep her cool. If he complains about that, that's not my fault. While Nikki is starting to lose the plot. I've got Terry coming now. Terry will kick off. Oh, There's only so much can do. No good, this. I've had enough. Because we've got to process some quick time. It's late afternoon at the yard. Right, Mel, this is it, last car. And Mel is up against it. Oh, my good lord. Trying to complete Terry's test to strip 15 cars. Get it boxed off, there's only a few bits left on. I can get it to John's scrap. I can't get it. Are we just cutting these pipes here? It's just have to undo that, and then that plastic will come off, and then you'll be able to move it. Well done, Mel. Done well there. Well, done really well, yeah. Proud of her. 
bet she's glad because she seems to be getting a bit annoyed and a bit angry with everyone because she'd been on it non stop. But <laughs> without Mel, it wouldn't have been done. Mel, you are the one, the new face of the yard. Well done, girl. <laughs> Seven's going to be over the moon with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I've given the order to Mel and, hey, presto, it's done. Yeah. Ow. Did it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's only a, a young girl and it just shows that if you give somebody an order and they listen, you know, and they get on it, it can be done. After rising to the challenge, Mel has earned her place on the team. I believe that we've done it. Pressure's now off. Nicky and Mel, they've both done a really good job. Mel's really come up trumps. Up against it, getting the yard ready to film a rap video. Right, come on, don't stop now. What's going on now? Terry's now been called to a meeting with the producers, who, rather than offer him more money, want to give him a part in the video. We've got a sound plan for you, so <laughs> you're going to be in here amongst the artists. <laughs> don't, don't Hands ask, up. <laughs> don't ask me to dance, mate, because I'll, da I'll dance straight out of the yard. I've got two left feet. That'll do then. Nice one. And that'll make up for the small amount of money that I've received for doing this job, because, like, they put this here, do that, make this. Do you know what I mean? For 300 quid. I'm a busy man. But rapper Walker, bring it on. <laughs> And news of Terry's role in the rap video has already spread to his head of health and safety, Dave. But Wiley, my Terry kicks his styly when he gets up to the film in posse. Time out, time in to begin. No, don't bother, Dave. Whoo! All right, Linz. This motley crew from London doing the uh, video, there's a few of them. It's a bloody mad production thing. There's loads of them. There's about 18, 18 of them turning up for do a rapping video. Yeah, did you not know? No. We had to set it up. You know, like, I said to our John, like, put a car there. She said, no, I don't want it there. I want it there. And I've put a car there. No, not there. Just turn it sideways. Uh, can you make that scrap big? I thought, all this for 300 quid. Which, um, he said he's got a, a nice little spot for me in the uh, video. Yeah. Yeah. Give over, no what way. What do you mean? Rapper well, Walker, Rapper Walker, Walker extraordinaire. But you know me, mate, I'm in for a penny, in for a pound, aren't I, cock? Yeah? Sorry, rapping video. Yeah, but I won't have to do it. I'm not, I'm not doing any rapping. Well, what are you going to do then? Well, Dance. I, I, I've done a bit of rapping in my time for bloody mail order, haven't I? Dance. Yeah, well, I'll dance myself out at yard, won't I? <laughs> Two left feet. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Why, though? Because you've no coordination, you can't dance, you can't sing. <laughs> can't wait to see this, honest to God. That's a bit tight, you and me. You can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Can't believe it. I'm not really into rap me. I don't mind it. It all sounds the same. I'm more of a Nod Stewart myself. <laughs> Having never been in a rap video before, Terry wants to know just what he's let himself in for. We want you running across the frame where artist is, is standing on there. Literally running straight across the screen from one side to the other side. Obviously, hopefully, you'll be nice and quick and nimble. When we're healed up. Oh, we want to see the face. <laughs> he's going to be the superstar of the show. Actually. No, don't be at it. Don't be at it. <laughs> As darkness descends, there's still a few finishing touches required before the yard is ready for its first rap video. Light it up, Berber. Light, Light it up. Nice. We didn't have this in the freezer. I'm not And rapper Hayes de Martian is standing by. I'll look back. Sick. I rap now would have to be something to do with scrappers, wouldn't it? Scrapper, scrapper rappers. <laughs> Scrap rappers. We're well, we called scrappers because all the staff scrap with one another. First positions, everybody. I've not really got much of an idea what's going on. I keep thinking that car's on fire. <laughs> okay, roast me! I'm just here for the beer, me. <laughs> but now the cameras are rolling. Okay, extras! Three, two, one, go! Terry and John are totally into it. Good, we're moving now, getting a bit of blood flow instead of standing around all day. It's like, come on, lads, let's get on with it. 
Isn't it? Double or seven, it. So we don't just sell car parts at the scrappers. We do everything. If it involves money, Terry's your man. <laughs> Camera set. Okay. Extras. Three, two, one. Off you go. Thank you. Reese, how did I do, mate? Yeah, yeah you smashed it. Did I? I mean, a roll would have been better. If you <laughs> a roll? Well, I would have done if it wasn't wet on the floor. <laughs> but, is, this, is there any chance to bob a job, right? No, no, I mean, no. I'll review the footage <laughs> and I'll get back to you and let you know if it's, it's up to scratch. Don't leave, leave me hanging, mate. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> you did a great job. You did a great job. Thanks a lot. It was only a small part, really, but at least I was with John, you know, so, like, it'll, it's created, hopefully, uh, a good memory for him uh, and, and for me. Got a young lad up there who's, uh, you know, trying to make himself, you know, famous, doing his rapping and a few, few young people there doing all, all doing the jobs. I like it. So yeah, I'm going through so bits, happy days, you know, it's it's good. It's been another successful week at the scrapyard for this family. Everyone pulled together, proud of them all. Mel and Nikki have really mucked in. John's got the Lords out. And Terry sold the Winnebago. So he's in the good books for now. This place only exists because I wanted to make it work for my family. If John said to me, now, look, I don't want to do this, I'm going to do something else, I'd say, oh, you know, you can do it, it's up to you, but this makes you a good living. Well, now, I feel like I'm fulfilling that responsibility. I feel like I'm growing up into my dad. But it's us as a family, isn't it? Sticking together and doing what we do best, you know, looking after each other. If you didn't have any of that and you, and you turned to turn your back on it, how sad would you be? Working with family and friends, it, they say it never ever works, but he's built this for his family. It's got to work, it's got to. Or else we've done all this for nothing. We've all been through like like stressful times, but I think I hope my mum put up with my dad over the years. She puts up with him because it's her husband, she loves him, and she knows that there's light at the end of the tunnel and they'll be fine. And the gin's got off there, I think. Must have done. 